So we've seen how to find the partial sums of geometric and arithmetic series, in particular finding the sum of the first 10 terms or finding the sum of the first 20 terms, so a finite sum. Here we're going to take a look at what it means to find an infinite sum. So it's a sum where the series goes on forever. It doesn't stop. So some of these you can see might not be interesting, but some of them are very interesting. So this first one here, this series is the sum from k equals 1, so that's telling us k is the variable and we're starting at 1 index, to infinity. So this series goes on forever, that's the top part, it says infinity. And then the formula that determines what each term value is, is 3 to the k. So for this first one here, this is when k is 1, the next one is when k is 2, and so you plug in 1 for k, and it's just 3 to the 1, plug in 2 for k, and that's 3 to the 2, so that's 3 squared, and then we can keep going. We're just multiplying by 3, essentially, so the next one is 81 plus 243 plus 729 plus 2187. So we're just multiplying by 3 from one step to the next, and we're adding all these terms up. So we can describe what's happening in the sequence, which is the numbers themselves, not necessarily what the sum is. We can describe the sequence as going from 3 to 9 to 27. So it's an increasing sequence. In fact, we can just say it's forever increasing. So if the sequence is forever increasing, and the sum goes on forever, we're adding an infinite number of things, well then the series, which is the sum, is going to be infinite. So that's not very exciting. That's kind of what you expect when you add an infinite number of things, you're going to get infinite sum, infinity. So we say here that the sum diverges. And then on the next one, we have, it's an infinite sum, we're using i as the indexing variable, starting at one, and we're going all the way to infinity. And then the base here, so these are both geometric, because we're, we're multiplying, the base here, or the ratio, is one third. So that means to go from one term to the next, you multiply by one third. So looking at this series, you have one third plus one ninth, so you're just multiplying by one third, and then 1 over 81. It's kind of the same, it's just the reciprocal of the previous one. And then the next one would be 1 over 243, and so on, and it goes forever. So you can see what's happening to this sequence is that we go from 1 third to 1 ninth to 1 27th. So the values of the sequence, which are the term values, are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so that means that this sequence is decreasing, and not only is it decreasing, but it is decreasing all the way down to a particular number. It's not going to decrease to negative infinity because these numbers are always going to be positive because this base ratio is positive. So it's actually decreasing to zero. Just like exponentials with those bases between zero and one, this base here is one third. So the numbers are getting smaller, but the numbers will never get smaller than zero. They actually will never even get to zero. It'll just get closer and closer to zero. So it's sort of like an asymptote at zero. So we say that this is decreasing to zero. So what that means for the series, which is the sum of the sequence, is that this series converges to a real number. So the two keywords here that we're using are diverges versus converges. Diverges means it goes to infinity, it doesn't have a actual real number value that it approaches. And so converging here means that it converges or approaches to a real number. Now it'll never get to that actual real number, it's kind of like with asymptotes, you know, like horizontal asymptotes from the rational functions from the exponentials, it says that that function gets really close to that value but doesn't actually touch it. But we can say that it gets so close and it's always going to get closer and closer to that value that we can say the infinite sum is or converges to this real number. And so asking or answering these big questions is that these two series are both geometric, but one converges and one does not. So one goes to infinity and one goes to a real number.
And the reason being, or, or just thinking about the difference between these two, well, the base of the first one is not a fraction. The base of the second one is a fraction. So we can say one is a fraction and other is not. And then from the pattern, we can tell because we have that one is decreasing versus one is increasing. And the big part here, what we can check to see if a series diverges or converges is based on that ratio R, the base. So remember from the general formula of a geometric sequence, we have a n is equal to a one times r to the n minus one. So here, from the general formula, we have this r is the key. You can just look at r, it doesn't matter what the first term is, the thing that matters is r, the value that you're multiplying from one term to the next. So if the r is essentially a fraction. We, we want the series to decrease, or we want the sequence to decrease. And so in order for the sequence to, de to decrease, we need the R, that base, to be between zero and one. Actually going even further, it can be negative. It just has to be between negative one and positive one. So the R, let's say if negative one is less than R is less than one, or we can also write this as absolute value of r is less than one. So just to not get confused, let's make these ones look a little bit nicer, absolute values. So if r is between negative one and one, or if the absolute value of r is less than one, then it converges, then the series converges. And this is the big check that we do. So looking at these examples here, we want to determine whether or not these series converge or diverge. So the first one is the infinite sum of 10 times 0 0.9 to the k. So here, the r is equal to 0 0.9. That's the base there. Now it's written in a slightly different way. It doesn't have the k minus one, instead it has just k, but that's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. It'll matter if we're looking for the first term, but we can worry about that later. But all we're worried about is the base, the r. And so the r is 0 0.9, which 0 0.9 is less than 1. So r is less than 1. So that's good. That means that we have the series converges. And then the next one, same thing. Take a look at the r here. r is 1 over 6. Well, the absolute value of 1 over 6 is less than 1. So that means that the absolute value of r is less than 1, which means this converges. And lastly, on this one, we have to do a little bit of work to figure this out. If you look at what's happening from one term to the next, we go from 1 to negative 1 half to positive 1 fourth to negative 1 eighth. The multiplier, the r here, is negative 1 half. So looking at this, we see that just the, that multiplier is negative one half, which means the r is negative one half. Now remember, we check to see if the absolute value of the r is less than one, and it is. Negative one half absolute value is positive one half, which is less than one. And so that means that the absolute value of the r is less than one, so it also converges. So all of these converge. And we will actually see what they converge to. And in order to figure that out, we need to work with the geometric series formula that we found previously. So that geometric series formula is given down here, and this is for the partial sum of a geometric series. And so if we have an infinite geometric series and we recognize that it converges, which happens when, again, the absolute value of R is less than one, then we can think about what happens. We're looking at n going to infinity. So the number of terms is going to infinity. So this is kind of looking at the tail behaviors back when we were looking at rational functions or polynomials or exponentials. We talked about this tail behavior where we have n approaches infinity or n gets really, really big. So if n gets really big, and remember that r is like a fraction, like one half or 
0.9 or 1.6. It's a value that's in between negative 1 and 1. So as that power gets bigger and bigger, think about this number 0.9 here. If 0.9, you just keep multiplying by 0.9 by 0.9 by itself over and over, so you're just increasing that k exponent, that number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. In particular, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller to zero. So what that means is that as n goes to infinity, r to the n goes to zero. And so we could rewrite this a1 times 1 minus r to the n, but we said r to the n approaches zero. So that's really zero. So this is a1 times 1 minus zero, which is a1 times 1, which is just a1. So in the numerator here, we have a1. And the denominator here, there's no n's, so this doesn't change anything. So this is 1 minus r. So in fact, the formula to get the infinite series, or the, the convergent value of the infinite series, is actually simpler than the formula to get the partial sum, or the partial series, which is kind of crazy to think that we made this much more complex by going to infinity, which is a infinite thing. It goes on forever. However, the formula is actually simpler. So let's take a look at how we use this and how we identify each of the parts. So with those same examples as we looked at above, we have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 10 times 0 0.9 to the k. So all we need to figure out here is the a1 and the r. So in other words, the base, that multiplier, and the first term. So a1 is the first term. So we can just plug in 0. So we can just plug in 1 to get what that first term is. So a1 over to the side here is 10 times 0 0.9 to the 1. So that means that a1 is 10 times 0 0.9, which is 9. And then we have r is equal to, well, the base, 0 0.9. And so plugging all this in, we have s sub infinity is equal to, I'll just write the general form here, a1 over 1 minus r, plug in the values that we have. So s sub infinity, the infinite sum, is a1, which is 9, over 1 minus r, which is 0 0.9. And we can just throw this in the calculator, and we get that that infinite sum is 90, or it converges to 90. Which, again, is crazy because we have the first term of this is 9. The second term, multiply this by 0.9, you get 8.1. Multiply this by 0.9, you get 7.29. Multiply this by 0.9, you get 6.561, and so on. So we're just going to keep getting more and more and more decimals. And somehow, this all these numbers that get more and more decimals converges nicely to 90. Now let's take a, take a look at the next one. So we have 4 times 1 6 to the i minus 1. So this one's actually written nicely in our format that we write our geometric sequences because it has i minus 1 in the numerator. So a1, the first term, we can actually just say is 4 because this is written in our notation where we write a1, as we wrote earlier on the left here, a n is equal to a1 times r to the n minus 1. So that exponent is n minus 1. And if you really want to, you can plug in 1 here, and you're going to get 1 minus 1 in the exponent, which is 0. So you have 1 6 to the 0, which is 1. So it's 4 times 1, which is 4. And then the r is 1 6. So the infinite sum is equal to a1, which is 4, over 1 minus r, which is 1 6. And now let's get a little bit of practice with fractions. So we can simplify the denominator here. So this is 1 minus 1 6. We need to get a common denominator. So we can rewrite 1 as 6 over 6 minus 1 6. And this is equal to now 4 over 6 over 6 minus 1 6. We got the common denominator. So subtract in the numerator. This is 5 6. And now we have a fraction that's dividing so to divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So you take the numerator, which is 4. We can write it as 4 over 1 times 
the reciprocal of the denominator is 6 over 5. And now we're multiplying fractions, so we just multiply straight across, tops with tops, bottoms with bottoms. And so we have that this is equal to 4 times 6 is 24, 1 times 5 is 5. So this is 24 over 5, or we can write that as exactly 4.8. So this is the infinite sum of this or the series. And the next one here, we have written not in the sigma notation, but it's written just in the list, one minus one half plus one fourth minus one eighth. So the first term here, we can identify, well, that's the one, that's the very first term that we see. The r, we've already identified to go from one term to the next, you multiply by negative one half. And so now what we have is s sub infinity is equal to one over one minus negative one half. Because remember that formula is a one over one minus r. And so we plug in a one, which is the first term one, and then r is negative one half. And so what we're doing here is s sub infinity is equal to, in the denominator we can simplify this. This is going to be one plus one half. And so one plus one half, we can write this as two over two plus one half. And so that is three halves. So in the denominator here, we have three halves. And now this is nice when we have one over three halves. I mean, we really are taking the numerator and multiplying it by the reciprocal of the denominator, but essentially this is just saying, do the reciprocal of the denominator if it's, if it's just one in the numerator. So we have the infinite sum is equal to two thirds which for a lack of better words, once again, this is crazy. This sequence here is one, one half, one fourth, one eighth. The denominators of all of these are even numbers. It's terminating values, right? One half, you can write as 0.5. One fourth, you can write as 0.25. One eighth, you can write as 0.125. And so these are all terminating fractions or terminating decimals. And it's all decimals that are powers of two. But somehow the result is a fraction with the denominator being three. So this means that this is a repeating decimal that is 0.666, so on, repeating forever, which is just black magic to see how we actually get that from this original series.